Good morning. Good afternoon. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Your Excellency, Your Highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to welcome you here because three things matter above all to the future of any country. That is education, education, and education. Of course, nobody in public life today has the luxury of focusing on just one issue at a time. But you should prioritize between the competing demands on your time and resources. We in Bahrain have no doubt that education must be at the beating heart of a nation's plans for the future. For us, this commitment is not a passing phase, it is a permanent trend. Let me tell you why. Our kingdom's commitment to education began 90 years ago. It was then that our first public education system was introduced in 1919. Ever since then, successive generations of leaders have inherited what we see as a duty, as well as a privilege to maintain our tradition of educational reform. Bahrain's first school for girls was set up in 1928, an uncompromising commitment to gender equality and a first in the Arab world. Our commitment today is just as passionate to keep improving the education and training opportunities for all our people, regardless of gender or religion or income. We can't do everything at once, but we will do as much as we can, as fast as we can. We do this because people are what make a country. People are key to a country's growth, and they are entitled to the education and training they need to win good jobs and a good income for their families. This idea is not entirely altruistic. It is in the interests of the government and the national economy to ensure a steady supply of skilled and qualified workers to improve industrial productivity and thereby stimulate economic growth. So you may say, Virtue and national interest go hand in hand. That's always the safest way to ensure that a reform will stand the test of time. By honoring our commitment to a good education for all, uh, but honoring our commitment to a good education for all has grown more complex and difficult for every country. Because the global economy is highly competitive and changing fast. That is why we are here today. We all know there are gaps in the quality of the world's education systems. We all know, in spite of good intentions, increased spending on education often fails to deliver the expected improvements. The facts are themselves are cause for concern. Let's look at some of them. Britain's National Foundation for Education Research says that in spite of endless changes, no measurable improvement in the standards of literacy and numeracy have been reported in the UK uh, in primary schools for in 50 years. Just looking at mathematics, Australia has almost triple education spending for students since 1970. No improvement in average mathematical scores, as measured by the OECD. Similarly, in the United States, spending has almost doubled since 1980. Class sizes are the lowest ever, and also no improvement in average mathematical scores. The problems are even worse in the emerging world. UNESCO's Institute for Lifelong Learning tells us that 774 million adults are illiterate. And to our collective shame, globalmarch.org, the movement against child labor, calculates that 246 million children are being exploited in forced labor when they should be in the classroom. Yet a single year of primary school increases the wages people earn later in life by 5 to 15% for boys and even more for girls. <coughs> and for each additional year of secondary school, a person's wages increase by 15 to 25 percent. Too many young men and women in developed as well as emerging nations are thrown into the jobs market without the skills they need to stay afloat in, in post-industrial knowledge economies. And as I have argued, this is not merely a tragedy for the individual, but a loss for their national economies and governments that need revenues to carry out their obligations. In a region like ours, the Gulf, with a population explosion of young people requiring employment, the search for solutions is all the more urgent. Identifying and investing in the right sort of education 
to unlock, to unlock the full potential of every individual is one of the great challenges facing the world in the 21st century. The Education Project has been set up as an international forum to address that challenge. The Education Project will be an annual event. You can't solve problems this big in one session. We intend the Education Project to be a practical event, a chance for educationalists to work together as an international team, with a focus on doing, not just on talking. It's about sharing ideas and innovations and reforms so the hopes of the next generation can become attainable aspirations, not impossible dreams. This means seeking answers to the hardest questions. How do we get the best teachers? How do we get the best out of them? How should we intervene with remedial help when students start to lag behind? Does it ever make sense to reduce class sizes without finding extra money to keep salaries from falling? Can targets be a hindrance, not a help, because they may distort priorities? The questions are easy, the answers are not. Let us take advantage of the education project to explore solutions and strategies that can help educators around the world to shape the future of education and make a difference for every society and for every section uh, of that society. None of us should expect to have a monopoly of knowledge or wisdom. These are open discussions, open to every stakeholder, and open to every idea, from the private sector and big corporations, as well as public bodies. The project has grown out of a Heinz experience in looking and learning from the best practice in the education systems around the world. And what we have learned above all is that education is a constantly moving target. You simply <coughs> cannot afford to be complacent. Despite having a well-established education, ed education system recognized as a regional leader, we realized we had to reform when we took a concentrated look at where we stood globally. To put it right, we initiated a comprehensive reform program. And I would like to mention just a few of these initiatives, which have already been achieved and already implemented. For example, we established the Quality Assurance Authority, the QAA we call it, as an independent body to ensure high educational standards by reviewing all educational and training institutions operating in the kingdom. We introduced a brand new teacher's training college based on best practice from, from, the world, from some of the world's leading educational models, in this case, Singapore. We recently launched the Bahrain Polytechnic to give Bahrainis the skills that businesses really need today, as opposed to shuffling people through universities just to get a degree with the word union. We have also recognized those with exceptional talent need to be nurtured to reach their full potential. To achieve this, I have spearheaded the Crown Prince International Scholarship Program, where young men and women are drawn from the public and private schools fully funded to attend some of the world's most pre prestigious universities. Our young ambassadors have excelled at Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, and many other great in institutions uh, around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, nothing is beyond the reach of anyone if they set their minds to it. Bahrain is making good progress towards the productive, highly skilled, and bilingual national workforce that we must have if we are to be well equipped to face the future. And we all have much to learn from, from each other and to keep learning because today's knowledge quickly becomes tomorrow's old history. The Education Project is an opportunity to showcase innovations that have succeeded in one area, and we hope can, su su can successfully be adapted for another. In this way, we can together create a practical roadmap with new information and insights for educators to follow around the world. We are privileged today to have experts from all facets of education, from preschool all the way to higher education. And nor must we forget vocational training, because it nurtures the skilled workforce which thousands of businesses need to grow, and millions of men and women need for satisfying careers and income. Ladies and gentlemen, a multicultural event of this kind is still too rare, because most, and probably all, countries are still a bit more inward-looking and insular, insular than we should be. Every country has its own way of doing things. Transferring even the best idea from one culture to another is difficult 
It demands patience and much cooperation. Because our project is new, none of us knows for sure what conclusions will emerge from our educational melting pot. But we do know they can make a difference for every society. Thank you for your patience. The education project is an idea whose time has come. Thank you for making it happen.